of the Doctor Board of the University of Trenton. Welcome to this uh, public defense um, candidate family, uh, all welcome. A special welcome to uh, Professor Wagner from Bristol University and Professor Ellenwood from Wageningen University. Welcome. Uh, you see that there are only three persons at the opposite side. Bo uh, Professor Sue is a little bit uh, late. He will come in later on, hopefully. Uh, that he will be here. Dear candidates, friends, can you take your place behind the table, please? You're uh, ready? Okay, thanks. Professor Wagner, may I ask you to start the debate? Dear candidate, it's my pleasure to start the discussion and the examination. Um, <clears throat> it was very interesting for me to, to work um, on low flows and to see all the, the effort that has gone into it. Um, so I hope you enjoy the, the debate as much as the, the work you've done. Um, let me start with my first question, which is, um, you compared data-driven models and conceptual models, and you made some statements about physically-based models in this context. So in your, in your overall conclusions for operational purposes in low-flow forecasting, would you prefer the use of data-driven models compared to models that try to represent the physics of the system? Dear highly learned opponent, thank you very much for the nice words and uh, for this uh, deep question. Uh, as a forecast forecaster, uh, I have uh, less confidence with data-driven models because we don't know what is happening inside the model. It's a total black box. But the results are surprisingly good. As I mentioned in the seasonal forecast part, they have a very high skill on the timing uh, of low flows, but still I would hesitate to use uh, data driver models in operational forecast. However, water authorities in the region use regression type um, models because they have kind of uh, uh, physical uh, basics included, but especially ANN type models that I used, I would not recommend in operational aspect. In, the, um, in your work, you looked at the controls on forecasting performance, um, and you try to identify different, different controls, what variables would predict um, at different scales. What about the role of human activity and the impact of human activity um, in your work in the in the shorter term forecast, but particularly in the long term projections in terms of climate change? Yeah, that is a very good point. In our user group meetings, which consists of experts from the region, um, they also recommended to look at the discharge from uh, wastewater. Uh, treatment centers because rural area is crowded and uh, 50 60 million people uh, can have a significant amount of discharge in the summer time and can change but i'm afraid <coughs> when i tried uh, to collect uh, such data it was uh, not possible yes um, also i tried i attempted to collect uh, then operational uh, data in the Swiss area for security reasons, they didn't uh, share this data as well. But I believe, according to your question, it is it may have definitely effect on uh, on low flows. Yes. Um, the candidate, do you think that in the long run, when you would look at the climate change impacts, whether the human activity will overshadow 
the climate change impacts in the long run? Or do you think that for low flows, climate change will have a higher impact? Uh, I believe the shift in the regime will, will be based on uh, the large-scale climate, uh, climate events, uh, like the reduction in the precipitation snow will have more impact than human activities or land use change. But this part should be for sure uh, looked, must be looked more in detail. Uh, we might be surprised with this uh, outcome, but uh, with the things I have done in this thesis, uh, I have seen that uh, the timing with the precipitation coming from the climate models has the greatest uh, impact on the timing. Also, the uh, dams will, will change. I indicated this in the discussion in the last chapter. Yeah, dam operations will greatly influence too. <coughs> you used um, bias correction in in your work in terms of downscaling and linking linking climate change projections to to your model. What do you think is the how big is the impact of the choices you have to make in the context on uh, the resulting projections that you would get? We know that GCMs are the biggest source of uncertainty. And the, how you uh, well bias correct them uh, with the historical part, the, the uh, results will be better, uh, better. And we see different GCMs show quite uh, uh, different results based on the scenarios as well. Uh, but uh, in the thesis, we used uh, pre-cooked uh, bias corrected data from KNMI. So uh, myself didn't do the bias correction part, but there are many different linear and nonlinear application of bias correction, and uh, they will uh, substantially affect uh, the quality of the data. Yes. You mentioned the um, problem of getting access to human data, human yes. activity. Uh, or human impact on the flow data. Did you have other limitations in terms of data availability that where you might expect if other data sets might have been available for your analysis, like you used lake levels closer to alpine regions but not necessarily further away, or is there is there an impact of the available data on, on your result? Inevitably, yes. Uh, but the lakes uh, are mainly located in the alpine region. That's why we just uh, selected lake uh, as a variable for alpine west and uh, east alpine regions. And uh, uh, other land use in the recommendation part uh, can be uh, important uh, to look at it. And uh, uh, other human activities like uh, uh, the river closings Will will definitely affect uh, uh, the timing. Uh, yeah. I have one question where I would like you to to speculate a little bit more. Um, let's assume the the World Bank decides that low flows is a is a major topic for the future. Yeah. And they decided that you, as an expert in low flow forecasting, uh, should decide how uh, a 10 million euro budget is going to be spent to improve global and low flow forecasting. Um, how would you spend the money? What, uh, <laughs> what would you do? Dear highly learned opponent, thank you very much for widening my scoop uh, <laughs> as, a, uh, as a decision maker. Uh, I would definitely uh, invite good uh, software engineers and uh, climate experts from ECMWF. Florian Papenberger can be one of them as a supervisor to the group. Uh, we should not look at low flows as just low water levels. It's a drought, which we are coming in 2014. East of the uh, United States took a lot of snow this year, but this region in Europe had uh, not much precipitation and in my country too. So if you look at from drought aspect, 
then uh, it brings also food security many things uh, um, therefore uh, the, 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 the tools dealing with droughts should be incorporated in this 10 million budget and uh, the water uh, uh, trade between countries which is in our group assessed uh, based on water footprint can also be part of this component so I would uh, spend this 10 million very uh, carefully uh, but with good quality uh, mathematical and physical based uh, hydrologists and climatologists Thanks. Thank you You always can give the money to the university but anyway <laughs> <laughs> good. Could I ask you to continue the opposition please? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rector, dear uh, candidate. First of all, uh, congratulations with the uh, publication of your uh, PhD uh, thesis, which is uh, a very interesting uh, piece of work, uh, scientifically uh, challenging and societally uh, relevant. Uh, parts of your thesis have been uh, published in peer-reviewed scientific uh, literature. I'm happy with that, of course. Nevertheless, I have a number of uh, questions. Uh, as you can understand, that's why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> First uh, question pertains to uh, your definition of, uh, of low flows. On page uh, 33 of your thesis, you uh, basically uh, present the uh, discharge with an exceedance uh, probability of 75% as the threshold. Now, uh, why that particular threshold and how does that threshold affect your results? Dear highly learned opponent, thank you very much for this a critical question which all affect my thesis because this assumption this decision is uh, the fundamental decision uh, subjective normally uh, for low flows more critical level of Q90 or Q95 is selected but our purpose was uh, to, in, uh, to increase the number of days with low flows we looked at water authorities, how they uh, look at low flow definition. Uh, this Q75 was also hampering the river functions. That was justifying our decision. Uh, therefore, uh, first to have enough number of low flows, low flow days to calibrate the models, which increases tremendously to uh, 562 low flow days in three year period, uh, uh, or four. Uh, that's the, that's the two main reasons uh, which we uh, go to the Q75 instead of Q90. But that is a decision you took uh, early on during your research, I presume. Yes. Uh, with the knowledge you have now, would you make a different choice, or would you perhaps add one or two variables, one or two thresholds? If yes, which thresholds? Uh, dear highly learned opponent, uh, I didn't think about uh, this before. Uh, there are different uh, low flows, like seven day uh, moving every seven day minimum ten day uh, seven nm ten, uh, or um, including how uh, question comes to me. Uh, because averaging different, yeah, that might be, uh, yes. Uh, I was personally thinking along the lines, for instance, of uh, the duration of a uh, low flow spelling, below a threshold. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, spelling, run analysis of low, yeah, that is exactly a, a very critical point that we were thinking, because uh, if one day low flow happens, maybe it doesn't affect any function, but if it happens two, three days, uh, the, the, the freight shipments are waiting in the German part, cannot move, uh, that makes more sense. But we added this uh, uh, sev severe severity in our uh, seasonality analysis to indicate more uh, the, the more severe low flows we added into the formula, which was an adding value of my thesis. But definitely the duration of the low flow is very important to, uh, to look at, yes. And could you think of one other aspect apart uh, of the uh, uh, duration, linked uh, also to the to the drought spell, if you will? Yeah. The, then, then, if you look at the the hydro uh, the, the, the the volume, 
uh, loss, volume loss can be uh, the total deficit volume. The deficit volume. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That makes sense. Thank you very much. Um, I have a number of uh, questions uh, related to. Uh, let me see. Figure three point four on page uh, seventy seven of your of your thesis, uh, which is in a sense uh, a crucial uh, figure because you start a whole debate uh, from that figure about uh, the influence of, for instance, parameter uncertainty versus input uncertainty, uh, etc. Now, if I look at that particular figure, I see that uh, the uh, uncertainty associated with lead times zero, as far as the input is concerned, approaches uh, zero. Is that correct? Uh, for A or B? Uh, well, yeah. for, for both, very, yeah. very close. Uh, yeah, because... But for uh, B more in particular. E e yeah, uh, it, it approaches uh, zero. Right. Yeah. So, what does that mean? Because our uh, uh, forecast models, burn and radar things, can really good forecast the next day. When the data quality is good, the, the hydrological model just is doing very well too, like a simulation. Mm -hmm. That's why in the shorter lead time, the, the, the uh, uncertainty is I can understand yes. that, that as the lead times uh, In increase, of yes. course, the uncertainty yes. associated with yes. the forecasts exactly. also increases. Exactly. Uh, however, uh, I have some difficulty to grasp that the uncertainty associated with lead time zero would be zero. Because that would suggest that we would be able perfectly yeah. to measure, let's say, catchment average precipitation. Well, uh, the, the first, uh, in the x uh, axis, the first value is one, uh, lead time one. Sure. Uh, so you said uh, zero uh, lead time. Uh, sure. But, why, actually, sure, yeah. but the uncertainty associated with that is assumed to be zero. Eh? What do I see on the on the vertical axis? Yeah. Is a measure of uncertainty. Yeah. Right? So. Uh, so all of this is relative to, uh, let's say the intrinsic measurement uncertainty, if you will. Uh, or how should I interpret this? Um, I'm not sure if I uh, catch the last uh, part. Interesting? Uh, well, basically, you say that the, uh, if I look at the, uh, yeah. the vertical axis yeah. of your graphs, yeah. the uncertainty does approach zero for yeah. lead time, well, for one, lead time one, one day. in this yeah. case, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, how good is that estimate? of the uncertainty being zero. Well, in the A1, uh, the blue and the green, red, is still not zero. But for uh, HPV, yes, all is approaching to uh, zero uh, because of the sophistication of the model. Mm -hmm. uh, th there are three comp uh, compartments. Uh, so it, it depends on the model type, model structure as well, but uh, it's assumed that with a one day ahead uh, weather forecast, mm -hmm. your uh, errors or uncertainty should be really minimized. So but of course, even in the simulations, there are uncertainties, uh, inevitable uncertainties, yes. So your... Uh, 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 How large are those uncertainties as compared to the <coughs> uncertainties associated with the forecasts? For instance, for lead time one or two days. Yeah, in our forecast, we didn't use observed ones. We used control forecast. You want to come this point, I think. Yeah, we, maybe it would be more uh, realistic to include also just perfect forecast, which is observed values, and see and compare. This is missing in this thesis. Yes. Well, uh, I just wanted to kind of ask you to gauge the relative importance of the two sources of uncertainty. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thank you very much. And, and so what about that conclusion uh, that you uh, draw in this particular chapter uh, of uh, parameter uncertainty associated with uh, the hydrological models that you use being much more important than input uncertainty? 
Yeah, it is relevant for low flows, especially for high flows. It's the common sense and uh, uh, well-grounded uh, uh, output from the studies that input uncertainty is the main driving uncertainty. But for low flow period, uh, especially 10 day in these figures, you even don't need uh, precipitation input. Models can run without uh, any precipitation information. When it is longer, uh, up to three months, mm -hmm. input uncertainty become important. But for short term forecast, mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, one of the suggestions from Florian Poppenberger, mm -hmm. uh, one of the reviewers, that try also zero uh, precipitation. Mm -hmm. We were amazed that uh, the, uh, the forecast uh, uh, did not hamper the quality of forecast. So that's why input uncertainty become less important for low flows only, mm -hmm. but parameter uncertainty becomes really uh, dominant. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, explanation. Uh, Mr. Rector, do I still have time uh, for one? Yes, please. Uh, very, very short uh, uh, question. question.